This is part 63 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to handle a JSON array returned from an ASP.NET web service using jQuery. Here is what we want to achieve. When we click this button Get All Employees, we want to retrieve all the employees from the database table TPL Employee and display them in a table as you can see here. This is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. At the moment, this example retrieves a particular employee and displays that employee details in a table. Now, instead of retrieving a single employee, we want to retrieve all the employees. In order to achieve that, we need to modify both the employee web service and the jQuery code itself. So first, let's look at the changes that we need to make to the employee web service. So this employee web service has got this function get employee by ID. To this function, we pass the ID of the employee whose details we need. So this function is going to retrieve that employee from the database, serialize that employee to a JSON string, and write that to the current response stream. Now, instead of retrieving a single employee, we want to retrieve all the employees. And to do that, the first thing I'm going to do here is change the name of this function to get all employees. And since we are going to get all the employees, we don't have to pass any specific employee ID. So we can remove this parameter. And here, I'm going to create a list of employee object. And let's call this variable list employees equals new list of employee. This list class is present in a different namespace. So let's go ahead and bring in system.collections.generic namespace. And if you look at the SQL command at the moment, we are using a stored procedure. So what is this stored procedure going to do? It's going to retrieve a specific employee, but that's not what we want. We want to retrieve all the employees. So I'm going to include a select query here. Select star from TBL employee. So this query is going to retrieve all the employees from TBL employee table. Now this is a select query. It's not a stored procedure. So we can get rid of this line from here. And we don't have to pass any parameter to this query. So we can get rid of this SQL parameter code as well. So this is the command that we want to execute, which is going to retrieve all the employees, open the connection, execute the command. And while we are reading each row, what we want to do is create an employee object and populate ID name, gender, and salary properties of that employee object. And once we have populated all the properties, add this employee object to this list. So list employees dot add the employee object that we have just initialized. And finally, what we want to do is serialize that list of employees to a JSON array and then write that JSON array to the current response stream. So that is the modification for our web service. So let's go ahead and build our solution. So now this employee web service should be returning a JSON array which contains all our employees. So let's click on this get all employees. Let's invoke that and notice what we are getting back. We are getting a JSON array back which contains all the employees now. And the important thing to keep in mind here is that notice that it didn't attach that D property which by default an ASP.NET web service appends to the JSON object it returns. All right, so we have the JSON array now. All that is left is to call this web service and consume this JSON array using jQuery code. So the first thing that we have to do is change the HTML of this page so it looks like this. And in the interest of time, I have already typed the required HTML. So let's copy this and paste it within the body section of our HTML page one dot HTML. So what do we have here? So the first element here is a button element. The ID of the button is btn get all employees. And then we have a table. So if we view this HTML in the browser, 
this is how it looks like. We have a button and a table with just a header. And if you look at the table HTML, it's straightforward. We have given this table an ID, TBL employee, and it has got T head and T body sections. Within T body section, we don't have anything. Within T head, we have ID name, gender, and salary columns. All right. Now, what we want to do is call the web service using this jQuery code, and then we want to loop through each employee object that is present in the JSON array and then build a table row and append that table row to this T body section. All right, so let's look at the change that we need to do to this jQuery code. First of all, the button ID that we have here is btn get all employees. So when we click that button, that's when we want to call the web service. So let's change the ID of the button here to PT and get all employees. So when we click that, we want to execute this code. Now we are not going to send any specific employee ID. So we can get rid of this line from here. So here we are using the Ajax function to call the employee web service. Within this employee web service, we don't have this get employee by ID function anymore. Instead, we have this function get all employees. So let's change the name of the function here to get all employees. And now we are not passing any data to this web service. So we can get rid of this data option. And the type of data that we are expecting back from the server is JSON data. And we are going to, to issue a POST request. And this is the function that gets called when the request completes successfully. And what gets passed to the success callback function is that JSON array that we have j seen. So this is a JSON array now. Now what we want to do is loop through each employee object within that JSON array, retrieve ID name, gender, and salary property values, and build a table row and append that to this T body section of this TBL employee table. So let's go ahead and find this table by ID. So what I'm going to do here within the success callback function is create a variable. Let's call this employee table and that is equal to let's use the ID selector and find the employee table the ID of the employee table is TBL employee and within that employee table we have got T body section to which we want to append the rows that we are going to dynamically construct all right, now we know that this data is a JSON array. So I'm going to loop through each employee object using jQuery each function. So this each function is going to have two parameters, the index of the employee object in the array and the employee object itself. So as we are looping through, now the next step is to append a table row that we are going to dynamically construct to this employee table. So employee table dot append. So what do we want to append? We want to append a TR and that TR is going to contain a TD. And within the first TD, what do we want to display? We want to display the ID of the employee. And to get the ID of the employee, we can use this employee object. And remember, you know, the JSON array that is returned from the web service does not have that D property. So if you want to retrieve the ID property value, you can simply use employee.id. And we want to close this TD and open a new TD element. So close the TD and open another TD. And now what we want? Now we want to append the employee name. So emp.name and we want to close that TD and open another TD. Let's actually copy this. And now we want the employee gender and the same idea. Close the TD, open another TD. And finally, we want EMP dot salary. And finally, close the TD and close the TR.
that's it so it's going to loop through each employee construct a table row and then append that to the employee table all right so let's save the changes let's go ahead and reload this page and when we click get all employees notice that we get all the employees from the table now if we click get all employees again look at that every time we click uh, get all employees it appends you know the retrieved rows to the existing table now we don't want that to be happening we want to clear the table before we add the rows again to the table and to empty the table what you can do is we have this empty function so simply call empty function it's going to clear all the existing rows so let's save the changes reload this page and now look at this first time you click you get all the rows you click it again it's going to clear the existing rows and then retrieve them and display them again okay so now no matter how many times you click we only have one set of rows appended to the table so here is the modification that we did to the employee web service and the modification that we did for the jQuery code that's it for today thank you for listening and have a great day